Sharon and I are going to show you the partner version of the most important quadratus lumborum exercise and QLs, as you will have read from the book, are implicated in the pain of low back pain for the majority of people who have that problem. So this is what it looks like. First, stretch the legs out in front of you with the knees bent and take one leg out to the side like this and then fold one leg like so. Now just watch. If you can't do this action, if you can't lean forward far enough to hold your foot with a palm up grip, you're going to need something to tip you slightly forward. So that's what we've got the cushion here for. Put a cushion underneath the hip that you're bending over like this and watch. All of a sudden, your whole body will be further forward. It'll be much easier to hold this position. So I'm going to hold my foot with a palm up grip with the arm bent like this so that I can press this elbow back inside this leg which I'm doing now, and see how that brings the shoulder forward. I'm then going to use that as the pivot point for taking this shoulder back. Now just supposing I couldn't get this shoulder back, Sharon will show how to assist so that the contraction can be done to improve the shoulder position. She's going to hold me in position. I pull this shoulder forward towards you in a contraction. Five, four, three, two, one. I stop. I take a breath in and I roll my own shoulder further back like this. So that's the first contraction, the first part of the exercise. Thank you. Now she's going to get into position to show you the second part of the exercise, but let me just get into a stretch position myself. And that's here. So her first job is to hold that hip down, which she's doing now. And then if, if I find that my body is actually on my leg, I just straighten the leg slightly further like this, but still keep the bend in it because we don't want the hamstring sensation to overwhelm what's happening in the back. Roll the top shoulder back again. Reach, I reach this arm out, as we did in the chair version. And now in this position here, she makes sure that she can't be moved by me and I press back towards her, directly towards her, away from the leg that I'm holding. I stop, I take a breath in, and on a breath out, watch, I reach further out and she follows me. Now in time, you'll find that you'll be able to hold this foot like this, and once you've got hold of the foot like that, you won't need a partner, because then by straightening this leg further, you'll be able to get all the stretch that you need. But in the beginning, I recommend if you've got a friend or a practitioner who can help you, use this exercise and it will really get into this area. This next version of the exercise adds a very powerful latissimus dorsi component to the basic QL stretch, but you need a partner to make it work really effectively. Just a little note, an anatomical note here. The thoracolumbar fascia to which latissimus dorsi attaches actually extends over the sacroiliac joint back here. And we've had many people do this stretch who've been told that they have sacroiliac joint problems, and when they do this stretch, they'll move around and get up and walk and say, well, that's interesting, that feels completely different now. Our conjecture is that when you stretch latissimus dorsi really strongly in this position, you can actually stretch that thoracolumbar fascia, the part that extends over the sacroiliac joint too. Anyway, regardless of whether that's accurate or not, this is what the exercise looks like. I'm going to get into the same end position that we finished with in the last exercise, which is like this, and then Sharon is going to step inside the leg here. This is critical. The book actually has that detail wrong. Jennifer's leg is behind my leg, and the problem with that is that you can be pulled over backwards in the exercise. If you're like this, in fact, Sharon, just come around very slightly further to your right so that you're well balanced, that's it. You hold your partner in a trapeze grip like this, and then reach out to the partner like this, and that stretches the, the, the latissimus dorsi, and particularly the lower fibers. The contraction now is that I'm going to pull my arm back from her, so as though I'm pulling my arm back to my own body for a count of five, four, three, two, one, I stop. I'm going to straighten my leg a little bit further because that's not too tight today. And watch on a breath out, I then reach the top arm even further off the body like so. Now in that position there and at that angle, I'm definitely stretching over the sacroiliac joint. And you can adjust the, the final position of the stretch by moving somewhere between this position and this position. That's a very good angle today. So just take my arm off a bit further. That is absolutely beautiful. So experiment with different positions and always, of course, try different. Um, when you find a good new position, just use a different contraction there and see if you can loosen that bit. So now let that arm go. Put this arm back down on the ground. Always lift yourself out and do the other side, of course. 
But if you get this stretch right, you'll get a sense of relief in the lumbar spine that no other exercise we've been able to devise has, has been able to get. So try it, you may like it. Thanks. We show it that both those things look like from the other side. Okay. I'm gonna stay sitting on the cushion to keep me tilted. And just to remind you, it's absolutely critical that you get this leg out to the side as far as possible before folding this leg. Then, wriggle around on the cushion to find the comfortable position. I lean forward and then to the side so that I can hold my big toe with a palm up grip. I then straighten the leg very slightly until I just feel the tiniest of hamstring sensations. I press this elbow into the leg like this to bring this shoulder forward and I roll this shoulder here. Now if I can't get the shoulder back, I do a contraction in this position. I pull this shoulder forward, five, four, three, two, one. I stop, relax, take a breath in. And as I breathe out, Sharon gently eases the top shoulder back. I let the head go to the side. And I breathe in that position for at least a few breaths in and out. And then when I want to do the next bit, she moves around to the side as before. So I'm already in this position. Straighten the leg a little bit further. She holds this hip down and notice the way she's holding too. And make sure that your palm is soft, otherwise it can hurt the person. And then press back to her. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, relax. I breathe in. And then I breathe out. I pull myself a little bit closer to the leg like this. Then I can add the final part. I can bring the arm up in front of my face like this and then reach it out. That completes the stretch. Now let me add a little refinement. While you're leaning to the side like this, you can move the stretch further into the back by letting your own shoulder roll forward like this. So the top shoulder, this one here, is moving forward with respect to the bottom and I keep reaching to the side. And a little bit further forward, I keep reaching to the side. You'll notice that Sharon will move her top hand around a little bit further behind my back. That, that keeps the angle right in the back itself. And you'll, you'll need to experiment with this a little bit. And to come out, roll the top shoulder fully forward, put the hand on the ground, and lift yourself up out of the position. Have a bit of a wriggle around, get up and walk around and see how the back feels. If you've got this exercise right, the lower back should feel considerably more relaxed than it was a couple of minutes ago.